Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Retro Pop Planet. I'm coming to you live from my 1966 Ford F100 truck, which I call Big Billy. Now, I just got this thing back from the shop. I've owned this truck since 2012. The man that I purchased it from had a frame off restoration in 2002. It used to be a show winner. I've got numerous trophies to prove it. We're long beyond that point. Shortly after I bought this truck in 2012, the engine hydro locked and I had to have it completely rebuilt. Now, I thought when I rebuilt the engine that they also rebuilt the alternator. Unfortunately, that's not the case. And a lot of my electrical gremlins had to do with the fact that the alternator and regulator were from some time in the late 1980s. I mean, this thing would die on you. I built through four different batteries. I would trickle charge the batteries. I'd have to jump this truck numerous times all because I thought the alternator had been rebuilt. Now, I just got this back from the shop and I'm super happy that it runs. <laughs> it runs on cue, the engine sounds great. I have a 352 V8, but it's from a 1967. This originally, I believe, came with the V6 engine. Very underpowered. This is the long bed style side version. But with a V8, this thing hauls. I basically haven't done anything to this truck other than having the engine rebuilt. I pretty much kept it the exact same way uh, that I bought it. Because there really wasn't a whole lot to do. The man that I bought it from tried to keep it as original as possible, although I do know this truck was originally red and the previous owner had it completely repainted in factory Ford colors. This was an option that you could get back in 1966. Now I used to drive this practically every day for work before it stopped running well. And it's a great truck, it's a great hauler. You can put a ton of stuff in the back here. So I realized before on this channel that I have not done a walk around of my truck and I thought I would take advantage of this absolutely gorgeous day to do a walk around, go for a drive, here in Virginia, we're in phase one, which means some of our stores are open. My art supply store is finally open again. So let me show you the walk around of the truck and then we'll just head out on the road. So yeah, this is the long bed version and you can see how long this bed actually is. The long beds aren't as desirable as the short beds because they take up so much space. This is a standard parking spot and you can see just how long this guy actually is. Definitely more for rural driving and not city driving. You can see this was originally designed as a work truck. So you would have stakes. People can put stakes in here and attach ladders to them or uh, you know, haul wood or haul yard waste, anything like that. These were meant for farm use. Now the previous owner has this badged as a Ford Ranger. This is not a Ford Ranger. Ford Rangers were extremely rare. I just wanna let you know that uh, this truck is deceiving, it's a fraud. I have the original badges. They actually say Ford Twin I-Beam, which is the unique suspension for this particular model. This truck originally had bench seating. The guy that I bought it from told me that unfortunately the bench seat was trashed. Rats had gotten inside it and chewed up the insulation. The springs were rusty and shot. These seats have been repainted. These are from a 1966 Ford Mustang. A lot of these Ford parts were practically interchangeable. And I believe the console is from a Ford Galaxy. Some of these badges are a little wonky. I do have some electrical gremlins, but the important stuff like the speedometer, the hot, cold temperature, the fuel gauge, all work great. There's the oil pressure. You've got an emergency warning flasher beacon. You've got your choke, you've got your fan pulls. This thing does not have air condition, which sucks for the summertime, but it does have these amazing vents in the footwell, one on each side. And with the windows rolled down and those foot vents open, you get a great 
cross air in here and it actually feels amazing even in 90 plus degree temperature the heat works great now this is the original radio but I have a aftermarket radio in the glove compartment unfortunately when all of my electrical gremlins came about I disconnected it so I do not have a radio working in this unit at this time it also has the ashtray unused or maybe it was used by the previous owner the original owner I also got these really 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 cheap um, speakers in here which sound okay when the radio is hooked up maybe that's something I'll do next I've got this really cool aftermarket Sun Super Tac and it's in the thousands for RPMs and uh, it works great I have it set for 3000 that's where this truck likes to ride it is a three speed three on the tree down for first gear up for second and then down for third and then if you want to reverse it's straight up from first gear and then the horn which is very loud you've got your high beams you've got your lights you've got your wipers which I never use and then you've got a lighter which is disconnected because these are notorious for catching fire this door panel has some cool features you've got your window um, you've actually got a lever here to open the door this one's not functioning I have it disconnected these screws are stripped and uh, I'll show you the one on the other side and then you have a really cool pouch for storing stuff which I'm not gonna open and you have a vented window which comes in very handy because this rear window likes to act like a greenhouse on a very hot day I also have a vintage rotunda navigational directional indicator which does not like to stick on there I have to figure out a better method for that and then of course I have to have the dice now here is the functional door side this lever if you pull it will actually open the door like I said the other side it's stripped I think the thing that really stands out to me on this truck is the front grille then they went to the very sort of 70s look and uh, but this is my favorite they have that great carryover from the 1950s the chrome the giant v8 badge now as i mentioned this truck originally had a v6 in it so let's get under the hood and i'll show you the replacement 1967 v8 i had to put the camera down because this hood is very heavy but you can see it holds itself up i have a bunch of original faux moco parts that is the bag for the windshield wiper fluid Here's your oil filter old school oil bath and then all the badging for the 352 208 horsepower v8 engine this thing like i mentioned can really haul it's not super clean it's not super detailed you can see some rust there from an old battery that when the engine hydro locked the old battery purged itself of the battery acid and has over time rusted I might try to respray that at some point the company that rebuilt the engine actually repainted it in stock Ford colors now there's the alternator that was replaced nice and shiny and the regulator again very shiny you can tell it's new and I think they had to do some wiring as well because um, the wiring on this thing was just jacked and then what's great about these vehicles is just look how wide open that is unfortunately the squirrels and the chipmunks will like to hang out up here and uh, leave a lot of nuts so I have to be vigilant to keep the nuts out of the engine bay one of the things I plan to do today is try to pick up some new chrome tips because this thing is not garage kept and you can see the rust has really gotten to this and uh, the local auto store has them very inexpensively
Let's go. Thank you.